Brilliant. Thank you so, so much, Matt, and good evening, everyone who has attended this event. Um, it's really great to have you all here and interested in the session. So I'm Leila, the Student Recruitment Officer at the College of Legal Practice. So any students who are interested in our courses or have any questions about the SQU route and which way to approach um, the assessments, I'm usually that, that person that picks it up, as well as Matt, um, as part of the student recruitment team. So um, at the end, we'll give you an opportunity and, and we'll give you details of how to contact us. But we're here for you just to help kind of break down those barriers and break down those um, myths around the SQE and help you understand the best routes for you. So um, I'll hand back over to, actually, I'll hand it to Ben, um, one of our students. Hello, thank you very much for that. My name is Ben Palmer. I am a student at the College of Legal Practice and I'm on the part-time LLM course, which encompasses the preparation for both SQE1 and SQE2. And I'm also a paralegal at Marks and Spencer in the in-house employment team. Wonderful. Brilliant. It's great to have you here, Ben and Matt. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Matt. I, I am, as hopefully you can see by the screen in front of you, I am the student recruitment manager uh, within the college. Um, I oversee the process from being a prospective student through to current student through enrolment and admission. Um, and I also support the college in a number of other ways. But for everybody here, we are the people who oversee your journey from inquiry through to student. Wonderful. Thank you so much both. So let's kick off. Um, so we've got a wonderful jam-packed session here for everyone here this evening. We will try and keep it to the 45 minutes hour slot, but um, you're always welcome to kind of get in touch if you've got any other questions and we're not able to come back to you in this session. So um, we're going to kick off with a quick introduction of who we are at the college in this session. And um, we'll then explain the SQ route to qualification and any, um, any facts you might need to understand before approaching um, which courses and things like that. So we'll talk through the SQ1, the SQ2, and um, all of those um, elements which um, kind of make up the SQE as well. And we'll talk about, uh, we'll also invite Ben, which you've seen earlier, um, to talk through his experience with us and with um, sitting the SQE assessments. Um, we'll then give you a, a lovely little course demo just to see um, effectively how we, um, how we train you to, to understand and, and to get through the SQE assessment as well. So I'll give you a brief demo on um, our course and our materials and how students learn with us as well. Um, and then I'm gonna pass over to Matt who will talk through any considerations when choosing your preparation course. So um, things to think about such as time, um, money, and all the other things in terms of which, which courses might be best for you in that sense um, and the way to approach the SQE. We'll then um, close off by giving you some reasons why we'll be um, a good provider for you if you are considering the SQE and um, why and how um, or what makes our courses so great there as well. Um, we'll also um, let you know our upcoming dates, how to apply, and obviously give the opportunity to ask questions. So as Matt said, do pop them in the chat or in the Q&A function, and we'll try and pick those up as soon as we can in the call um, or at the end. So um, who are the College of Legal Practice? So for those who are not familiar with us, um, we're a postgraduate law school um, built wholly for online. And um, we, we specialize in SQE pre uh, preparation where um, our parent company actually are the leaders in legal education in Australia. So we've got 20 years of experience in legal education. Um, we offer courses such as the SQE preparation, we offer an LLM, but we also offer um, a graduate foundation in law for those who or maybe considering a career change and considering um, moving to um, perhaps single solicitor. Um, you can see our ethos listed here, and really what we're about is effectively just making legal education and qualifying as a solicitor more accessible and more affordable. Um, traditionally, we know that the law is um, often a profession that, that is surrounded by many barriers, so we try and do our bit to eliminate that by offering our courses at um a more affordable price um we're all about specialized um tutor um support and supervision so um we offer some of the highest levels of one-to-one -one supervision and targeted individual support on our courses so whether that's the sqe prep the llm or our um gfl indeed um we do make sure that we try and um do our bit and our academics do their bit um to support you through as well 
We're all about fostering an inclusive and supportive learning environment. So we, as we know, we, we know it's um, a challenging profession to enter. And so we try and make sure that we facilitate an inclusive learning environment, both through um, our learning and teaching materials, but also um, just through our individual support. So whether it's me or Matt, or even our, our student ambassadors, through to the academic team, we try and support you along the way um, to make sure that we have um, uh, you have a great experience with us. Um, as you can see as well, we do make sure that we try and have a collegiate approach with our, our uh, at the team, uh, with the team and with our students as well. So we like to make sure that we've got um, that, that close knit relationship with our students just to make sure that they feel supported throughout as well. Matt, I'll hand over to you to talk through the Escarina. So um, that's us. Thank you very much, Leila. So there's no better place for us to start about, you know, talking about the SQE than what is the SQE itself. So obviously previously um, within England and Wales jurisdiction, the way to qualify has been through the LPC and the LPC is now being slowly phased out um, and is bringing in the SQE route. Um, the SQE is the Solicitor's Qualifying Exam um, and this is broken down into four sections which we have tried to, uh, in, a, in the simplest way we can, um, um, dis display for you and um, we say they are four puzzle pieces the SRO refers to them as puzzle pieces because unlike the LPC which was a very linear process where you would do your exams um, you would do your study you do your exams get your training contract and qualify after meeting suitability requirements um, with the SQE you can do it in nearly whatever order suits you best and how you want to do that so the first um, part of the uh, SQE is you need to have a degree or equivalent so a degree could be a UK degree or the um, equivalent of a UK degree or equivalent, equivalent work experience. Um, the key change here from the LPC is on the LPC, it had to be a law degree or it had to be a conversion degree, like a GDL or a PGDL. Now with the SQE, you can just do a law degree. So you can start the SQE or pass the SQE, having you um, done sports science, business, management, engineering, and whatever degree that was there for you. However, we do advise um, there's six foundation areas of law in England and Wales that you need to know. Um, on the SQE, there's 13 practice areas, which we'll go into. So going in without prior knowledge of law in England and Wales, you will struggle. So we do recommend um, top up programmes. We offer a GFL, which we'll discuss soon. Um, but that's the first area of the SQE. The second area are the two exams, SQE 1 and SQE 2. Um, we will go into detail into these in a second, so I won't dive in too much now, but it's broken down over a number of days and two separate areas as well. So you've had the two exams. The largest change um, is qualifying work experience, QWE. So on the LPC route, you had to get a training contract. After you've got your training contract, you then have to um, meet suitability requirements after your two years. Now, qualifying work experience is two years full time equivalent work. Now, that can be voluntary work. That can be um, something that you have done in the past. It could be banked from previous experience. It doesn't have to be a training contract. It could be a variety of different legal work or working within the legal industry. Why this is really key is you don't have to get that training contract. What you work towards on um, QWE is building up a list of competencies that the SRA set out, and you have to work towards two or three competencies. As long as you build those, um, and it's signed off by an SRA regulated solicitor, you can have your qualifying work experience signed off as long as it is um, two years full time equivalent. Um, and you can get it up in up to um, four institutions. So that could be six months in each or it could be 18 months in one, three months in another, three months in another, etc. So qualifying work experience has become extremely flexible and really useful um, if you compare it to what a training contract did offer. Now, the last part on there is you have to meet suitability requirements, which is very similar to what you had to do on the LPC. You just complete um, something online through the SRA um, and ensure that you meet the requirements of what is expected of a solicitor in England and Wales. Now, we have two separate kind of separate points down the right hand side, um, which just gives you a little bit of more in-depth de detail information. Uh, SQE1 and SQE2 are separate. You can't complete or sit SQE2 until you pass SQE1. Um, you have up to six years to complete the exam. So as soon as you've passed SQE1 or started SQE1, you have six years to complete. Um, the exams are run nationally um, by Kaplan on behalf of the SRA. So on the LPC, you would have sat your exams with your education provider where you would have done your preparation. Now it is run centrally. Um, so you sit these away from your education institution. So whenever you're looking at a provider and to provide you a preparation course, 
you would just need to keep in mind that their fees do not include the fees for the exams that you receive with the SRA. And lastly, QWE can be done at any point. You can do this alongside your studies, you can do this before your studies, or you can do this after your studies. So there's lots and lots of opportunity to really get the QWE when you want. And you'll hear some great experiences from Ben when it's his turn to speak, obviously, because as he said, he's working as a paralegal at the moment. So he's in a great position. Next slide, thank you. So what is SQE1? So SQE1 um, is the section of the SQE exams that looks at knowledge. So it's called FLK, which is Functioning Legal Knowledge, and it's split into two exams. So these two exams are three, a total 360 multiple choice questions, um, and they're split over um, two sessions for each one over a number of days. Now, you would sit these exams, um, excuse me, um, in a Pearson View test centre. So if you've ever done your theory test in England or Wales or anywhere in the UK, um, that is where you would go and sit your SQE1 exams. Um, these cover 13 areas of law um, in England and Wales, so there's 13 practice areas going up from the six that you would study at um, LLB level, so if you've done an, an undergraduate in law, or you've done a PGDL, GFL, um, where you do the six areas, there's 13, so there's a lot more knowledge that you have to take on. As I said, it's run by CAPLAN, so CAPLAN design and run and design and implement the exams on behalf of the SRA. Um, but these can be taken globally. So um, there's Pearson View test centres all across the world. The SQE1, I think, is up to 30 different countries that you can sit your um, SQE1 exams in. Um, and these are done every January and July. So when you're looking at your um, examination dates of when you would like to try qualify, so all the way after SQE2, you would look back and have a look at those dates. So you would, when looking at preparation course, what date do I want to finish by? And we'll go into a little bit more detail later. Currently, the exam fees for the SQB1 exam is £1,622. However, in the academic year for 23-24, it is being increased to £1,798. So the SRA are increasing the fees for their exams. Now, it's totally MCQ-based. Sorry, let jump back. There we go. Um, it's totally MCQ-based. So if you've been to university or um, in studies, maybe even at A-level um, or for further education level, you would have done some MCQs, some multiple choice questions. Um, now, with the MCQs for uh, the SQE1 exam, there are five plausible answers. So there are five answers that could be right. Um, but you have to find the one best possible answer. So that's where a lot of the training comes in. It's not just about knowing the knowledge, but it's understanding how to interpret it best. Each question doesn't state what area of law. So not only do you have to work out the right answer, but you have to work out the right area of law that it is applied and then find out the correct answer. On average, you have a minute 40 seconds to be able to go through each question of the 360. It is split over 10 hours um, into four sessions over two days. So you don't just go away for one exam, you go away for um, effectively four sessions of exams over two day periods. So there's a lot of examination to take into account. And Ben has gone through those, so he'll be able to give you a little bit, a bit of insight into what that experience is like. But as I said, it highlights the importance of knowing your knowledge um, and technique of being able to work out which um, exam uh, or knowledge area is being applied. What is SQE2? So SQE2 um, is the second half of the exam. So once you've passed SQE1, you can then go to SQE2. But SQE2 is all about skills. So it's all about legal skills. So this tests oral and written legal skills in six in five areas, sorry, of um, practice. So 50% of your mark in SQE2 is around delivering legal skills, which are uh, listed on the right hand side. Um, but the remaining 50% comes from knowing knowledge from five practice areas that you studied in SQE1. So not only do you need to learn the skills in SQE2, you still need to be able to recall a lot of information from SQE1. So it's really key that you don't just pass and then drop that information off. You have to carry on revising in those five practice areas. The assessments are, are called stations for SQE2. You have 12 written stations and four oral stations. Now, again, these written stations can be done at a Pearson View test centre. However, the four oral stations can currently only be done in Cardiff, Manchester or London. Um, so, is, again, you're going to be booking a number of days over a, a period of time. So, again, you wouldn't be going away and sitting kind of a number of exams in one day. These exams are spread over a period of time. Now, because there's this breakdown of doing both written and oral skills, um, assessments are more regular throughout the year for SQE2. So you can set SQE2 um, assessments in January, April, July and October. Um, as I said, the skills are on the right hand side, so um, they're there for you to have a look at. But the fees currently are £2,493. 
but in line with SQE1 going up, SQE2 has also been increased by the SRA to £2,766. Next slide, Leila. So what we wanted to do, because we are today focusing on starting the SQE, we wanted to actually give you the opportunity to look at what a exam question might look like in um, the SQE exams. Now, this is one of our questions. We write all of our questions from scratch. Our MCQs aren't derived from the LPC or um, content from the LPC. We write all of our, our questions from scratch. So I'll talk you through, I'll, get, I'll read the, the, the question out and then we'll prop the answer up so you can kind of get an understanding of what it's like. A car owner puts a sign on their car outside their house saying for sale £5,000 or nearest offer. Only 40,000 miles and 10 months MOT. A prospective buyer knocks on the owner's door and says they will pay 5000 but the owner of the car has just been online and realised they could get more on We Buy Any Car. So they are no longer prepared to sell for just 5000 The prospective buyer insists there is a binding contract to sell for £5,000. The question is, is the prospective buyer correct? Now, what's key for you to know here, as I've already alluded to, you have to be able to read that, understand which area of law is being applied, work out the right answer from those five plausible answers, and make your decision all in one minute 40. Now, Lady, if you'd like to pop the next slide, you'll see here that the correct answer is E, no, because the sign on the car was only an invitation, uh, not an offer capable of acceptance. So that is what you'd expected to be able to do 360 times in the SQE exams. Next slide for us. Now, what we want to do before I carry on talking or Layla carries on talking, um, we wanted to give Ben five minutes or so just to introduce himself, talk about who he is, and then Ben will drop back later um, and we'll have a little bit of a Q&A with Ben. So Ben, over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben. And as mentioned, I'm a student here at the College of Legal Practice and I'm on the part time master's course in legal practice, which encompasses the preparation courses for both SQE1 and SQE2. So I'm going to discuss my experience of the course so far, which I started last year. And if you have any questions at any point, um, do pop them in the chat and I can come to them a little bit later. So a bit of background about why I started the master's course at the College of Legal Practice. So I decided to do the part-time programme as I thought it would very much work well alongside my full-time role at Marks and Spencer as a paralegal in the employment law team. I already have my two years qualifying legal experience, so I wanted to do the master's SQE course to further my career as a solicitor, but also broaden my knowledge of areas of law that you can cover as part of the master's course, which as mentioned, covers all of the SQE1 prep. And so far, I've been very impressed with how the course has been delivered, the support and the materials on offer, which I will run through now. So firstly, I really like how the content is delivered. It's structured in a way which allows you to understand the material and then return it. There is a simple pattern for each module and subunit of the course, which is very easy to understand. Um, you have um, group sessions called town halls, which are really useful to help you plan your week of study and go over any important announcements, such as SQE updates, date reminders to book your SQE exams. And also it's a good forum to hear feedback that's submitted from the students and the course leader goes through it, um, which definitely shows I think that we're being listened to. You start off each subunit by watching an introductory video or podcast about the content that you need to cover for the exam. And these videos, podcasts, go over the basic principles you need to know for the exam. They're very useful as it allows you to understand the main principles of the law ready to go over the reading. And when you do get to the reading for the exam, uh, for the preparation for SQE1, it is laser focused on the content that you need to know for the exam. It's very understandable, very clear, and gives you useful assessment tips for the SQE um, throughout, which are really, really helpful. And then you start to consolidate your knowledge and retain your understanding of the legal principles by doing a short interactive activity and practice multiple choice questions, which are structured in the exact same way as the exam, as Matt has just shown you. And this helps you put the knowledge you've learned into practice. So I really like this way of learning as you understand the content quickly in a very simple way and then put it straight into practice, preparing you in the best possible way for the exam. So when I was looking at different providers, the support for the College of Legal Practice offered was fantastic. 
And that, I think, was the key difference between the SQE providers for me. So from the get go, the student services team answered any queries I had quickly and really helped me to navigate through the SQE process and what to expect on the course. Likewise, when you start the course, there is a fantastic level of support. So you get assigned a personal tutor, which you have regular catch ups with and discuss what you need to be successful with the SQE. On, and on the course and any pastoral support that you require. As mentioned, you have town halls regularly throughout the course, which help you orientate yourself for the week ahead. You also have surgeries, which I would say are structured a little bit like a virtual seminar um, at university. Um, and they are designed for you to ask any questions that you have. And they're also designed to go through the trickier course content. There's also discussion boards on there, which are a really good platform to use. Um, you can ask any questions and they go direct to the expert leading that particular module of law. And you can also then discuss those questions at the surgeries. So as you can see, there are several layers of support at the College of Legal Practice, which has really made me feel comfortable very early on and supported at every stage so far. And then just some general comments about my experience. So I think being a full time, you know, working full time, which as many of you probably are, that was a big thing for me when I was considering which SQE course provider to go with and the flexibility of the course with working full time. So the College of Legal Practice allows you to fit your studies around your schedule. So most of the, you know, the work can be completed in your evenings or your weekends. It's really whenever works best for you. Um, but the college does give you a structure, which I think is very important to, you know, help you progress through the SQB1 preparation course and to keep on track. So there is flexibility with when you cover the content, but there is a, you know, a really good structure through a calendar. So as long as all the work set is completed within the week, um, you can, you can plow through that content very well. And generally, although the main aim for me is to pass the SQE and secure a master's qualification, I am actually really enjoying the content. It's very engaging and it's delivered in a very, very good way. I have finished the SQB1 prep course. I have completed my first transactional module in dispute resolution. And now I'm a few weeks into the SQB2 preparation course, which is very interesting. Um, and, you know, I'm really, really happy that I chose the College of Legal Practice. I have no regrets in the slightest. Um, and I think the college provides you with the materials and the particularly the multiple choice questions to set you up for the exam the questions in particular are very reflective of what is actually in the real life exam and then if, a few other things before I kind of go and um, for the rest of the team to continue with the presentation I like to be able to alternate the way I study so sometimes looking at a screen is great particularly for the multiple choice questions and the interactive activities but Sometimes I kind of want to take a break from my screen, as I'm sure many other people do, and, um, you know, look at actual paper. Um, and the college provides you with really good hard copy materials. So whether you like to work on screen or um, in hard copy, the college really does have you covered. Um, and what also is important is the amount of multiple choice questions. The College of Legal Practice has thousands of multiple choice questions which really do help you prepare for the SQE1 exam and are very reflective of what to expect on the exam. Um, but ultimately, I understand all of your positions. This was me last year trying to navigate my way through what is a relatively new qualification, the SQE, but also which provider to go for and um, who, who can best support me with that. Um, but I can honestly say the College of Legal Practice has been fantastic throughout. And um, yeah, I do feel like they have prepared me for the best possible way for the SQE one and two exams. So that's all I'd like to cover, but um, there's a little section a little bit later to answer any questions. So if you have any questions, please do pop them in the chat and I'll happily answer a little bit later. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Ben. And we're delighted that you're obviously studying with, with us. So thank you for taking the time to talk through your experience. Um, so in this next part, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about our courses, but also, um, just delve into a bit of what Ben just talked about here and how we how you study with us at the college. So this is just an overview of some of the courses that we deliver. Um, so as I say, we deliver a graduate foundation in law, which is focused for those who are either non-law graduates or um, maybe um, have an LLB from another country, which 
um, might not be reflective of the, the law in England and Wales. And so that covers the um, six core um, foundational topics, which any LLB student would cover in um, their LLB or GDL. Um, that's priced at 3,250 and students on that course get 10% off their SQE prep or LLM fees. Uh, we also offer the SQE 1 and 2 prep as standalone modules. They're both um, delivered uh, full-time and um, have two part-time options. 13-week course would require around 30 to 35 hours of study and the 20-week uh, course would require around 15 to 20 hours of study. Um, the 40-week course would then require 8 to 10 hours. Um, and yeah, um, th those two are, um, uh, in terms of the time commitment, both the SQ1 and SQ2 are, are similar in that way. And the price points are also there. So 1,800 for SQ1 and 2,300 for SQ2. Now, moving on to the LLM legal practice, which is what Ben just talked to earlier. And um, that involves both the SQ1 and 2 preparation, but also um, a selection of elective modules, which include transactional and business skills um, as well. So they're all listed there at the bottom. Um, the full-time LLM includes a 13-week SQ1 prep. So you'll see they align with those full-time um, SQ1 prep dates. The part-time LLM includes the 20-week SQ1 prep and the 20-week SQ2 prep as well. And those will align with the SQ2 um, courses that we offer as well. The LLM is 6,900. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, funding options for that later on and funding options for the rest of our courses as well. So... I'm not going to focus too much on this slide because um, Ben's just, just done us a huge favour in terms of talking through how he feels supported and has gotten through um, the SQ1. But here uh, is just a list of bullet points of what you can expect on our SQ1 prep course. And I'm going to give you a bit of a course demo in a moment on what that looks like and, and how um, that actually looks in practice as well. So um, Ben talked about obviously the town halls and surgeries, the course is delivered um, through those sessions, which are also recorded there. Um, the, the surgeries cover the practice area. So there's 13 practice areas which are covered um, and, and those will be um, split amongst those, those 30 surgeries there or they'll fit within those 30 surgeries. The town halls, as Ben discussed, are more kind of um, program orientation um, focused. So more so around assessment points, the beginning at the end and things like that, just to make sure you're getting on okay. Um, but in terms of the course content and material, um, that there are over 1,900 videos, activities and scenarios for you to get through, as well as 2, 000, over 2,300 um, MCQ style questions. So um, I'm going to give you more of a demo just to, to I guess, um, I feel like that doesn't do the course justice. And particularly around what Ben talked through earlier, it's good to, to show students always um, what that looks like, actually. So I'm going to share my screen again now. So just bear with me whilst I pop that open. Um, here we go. So um, if you choose to decide to join our SQE1 prep course, this is what you can expect to join onto. So we use the Canvas learning platform. So for anyone that has kind of previously studied in a, a UK institution, a lot of used in, uh, institutions do use Canvas as well. So you might already be quite familiar with it, but effectively, our SQE is delivered um, through this portal where you'll get an introduction and overview of the course on the homepage. So here you'll get a background of, of the assessment, both internal and external, um, what you'll study and how you can expect to get through the course. But um, the main chunk of it, I think, or the great thing about our, our course and the way it's delivered is the way it, they orientate you through. So um, students get access to a course schedule and a course calendar, which I'll show you here. Now, this is our course that was delivered in February, um, and it's still kind of running now until June. This is the 20 week um, SQE1 prep course. Now, you'll see all of the sessions will be uploaded into this um, calendar, which will also be linked to the module as well. So um, what that means effectively is anything with the time that you can see here are sessions which you'd be expected or hopefully able to attend live. Now, if you can't attend them, town halls and surgeries are recorded. Um, but in order to maximize the opportunity on the course, we always advise being able to attend those. Um, anything without a time, so for example, here, um, you'll find the subunits and the recommended kind of um, content to get through that week. Now, you don't have to do it exactly on the days that are here, as long as it's kind of complete by the end of the week, 
you'll get a notification in the calendar which will tell you what is coming up in the week ahead. So as long as it's completed by a particular uh, time, um, you can either, for example, use um, your weekends to catch up on that or you can do it as indeed recommended. So if you click on one of the, um, the, the uh, links in there, it will take you to the actual um, course content. So take you to the modules here, um, but it, it um, also is a direct link. So if you click on it here, you'll see the, um, this is the contract formation subunit. And um, we recommend about two hours per subunit, but this is roughly the breakdown of how um, it's delivered. So you'll get an introduction. You'll then have um, a short video or short videos. It'll also be a podcast or audio file to listen to. And it will essentially um, talk you through the course. So, um, or talk you through that, that area or principle. So I'll, I'll play a couple of seconds and then move on to the next part. Contract, offer and acceptance. A contract can either be a simple contract or a contract by deed. Simple contracts are the most common. They can be... Right, so um, I'd love to show you the whole thing, but I don't think we'll have enough time. Um, effectively, um, you have the opportunity to um, change the speed. There's also a transcript as well, which um, you can see here. So that will basically um, replicate exactly what's just been talked through the video. And the great thing about the course is that it's all kind of linked together with the manual. So you'll receive a hard copy manual, three volumes of DIMPA SQE1, and that will include um, all of the practice area units um, and the content. Now, if you... Um, prefer to access them digitally, you'll have that, of course, there. And so here, for example, is the, the contract law one. So you'll see um, formation is um, under here, under, sorry, yes, there's formation. Um, and once you get the opportunity to go down to the activities, you'll see that you have the opportunity to consolidate the knowledge that you've just learned in that video. Um, this will also, as I say, be reflect, oh, what were the chances of that? Um, be reflective under the um, uh, the manual. So once you've attempted these, you'll see, um, for example, that it always turns you back to um, the manual. So for example, after you've had the opportunity to do those short activities, there'll be um, quite a lot of those. Um, but once you've kind of gotten through all of that, you'll have the opportunity to test a multiple choice question under that area. And so this is the, the um, question that we loaded up earlier. Um, the answer, I'm going to get it wrong, just to give you an example. Um, but it will tell you if it's incorrect, and it will also tell you why. So um, and what, once it does that, sorry, it will link to the manual. So it says C1.1.3. And if you go to 1.1.3, um, you'll see um, that will help you kind of answer the, the question as well. So. You'll effectively go through that similar routine for all of the um, subunits or the, the um, practice areas as well. And that will hopefully get you into the routine of being able to answer those questions. Um, I'm not going to go too much further into that, but I'm always happy to do um, a live demonstration for anyone on a call should they need, should they have any further questions. So that was the course demo. Now, you do actually have the opportunity also to um, I'm going to share my screen again. You do have the opportunity to um, try that for yourself. So we have loaded some of those materials for you to download. If you'd like to either go to that link or um, take a picture of that QR code, we'll also send this out later on. So um, screen grab it or do what you need to do with this now, um, and we'll send it out to you after, um, or, or indeed in the rest of the week um, and into next week. So. Um, we talked through our courses. Now, um, it's always important or to position yourself into a course that works for you. So Ben, as you talked through earlier, he's working full time and he's on the um, LLM in legal practice part time. And as I said earlier, the LLM in legal practice involves the 20 week part time SQE1 course. So here you'll see um, a breakdown of our, our three SQE1 prep courses. Um, the 13 week course is your full time course. So if you're a student who's just graduated, you'll see that um, this, this tends to be often uh, a popular option. Um, 
ideally for those that are either working part time or don't have too many commitments outside of work, uh, outside of, of study. Um, they'll be expected to, to commit about 30 to 35 hours of study per week. And the average contact time we would expect is around three to four hours. And that will include those surgeries, town halls and, and personal tutor sessions. So I won't talk through those in detail here. Um, you can see those listed at the bottom. For the 20 week course, that's around 50, uh, 15 to 20 hours of study per week and uh, one and a half to two hours um, on average um, contact time per week. Now, this will fluctuate, you know, some weeks it could be 45 minutes, you might only have one surgery and a uh, one-to-one. Uh, uh, -one. It can fluctuate between any of those times. So they're not a dead set um, number. We just like to give students the maximum amount just so they can um, offer that time in their week. And um, finally, the 40 week extended course is um, for those who tend to have studied law quite a while back, who just wanna get back into the swing of it. It's also, also for those who are almost unsure um, not unsure, sorry, who either we've recommended the GFL to, but then they, they can't um, kind of commit to the GFL for, for whatever reason that might be. We usually recommend the 40 week extended program just to embed that knowledge a bit further. And for that, you'll need about eight to 10 hours of study. Um, and that looks like 30 minutes to one hour of study per week. So let's talk money. This is also um, probably one of um, the, the key considerations that students um, will think about when um, thinking about their prep course. Now, as I say, we are probably one of the most affordable providers out there um, offering really, really high value um, content and materials. So I've listed here the, the course fees. Um, as I say, Graduate Foundation and law students do get 10% off their fees. So at the bottom, we've incorporated the total price or the total cost, depending on your background, and what route you decide to take. That will include the SQE assessments, which at the moment are 4,115. But as Matt pointed out earlier, they will uh, they are due to increase. The um, LLM is actually eligible for postgraduate loan funding. Students can get up to 11,836 if they're based in England. And I think that the number is there or thereabouts, if not higher for Wales. And the great thing about that is that our LLM is positioned in a way where students are able to afford um, the SQE assessments with the remaining fees of the um, the remaining funds from the loan. So our uh, our LLM and legal practice is six thousand nine hundred pounds, and that leaves you with around four to five four thousand pounds, or just over four thousand um, pounds. To uh, sorry, not just over that, up to five thousand pounds almost um, to support the costs of the assessment but also any kind of hidden or additional costs, like if you need to stay over for the assessments. There are other scholarships available, so I've listed some here. And um, we ran our first scholarship earlier in the year, and we're hoping to kind of continue doing that in the next um, courses and the course um, calendars as that continues as well. Um, the Law Society have a diversity access scheme. You can find that online, as well as the Aspiring Solicitors Foundation who offer grants for those who are interested in becoming a solicitor and maybe have faced some barriers there. If you're looking at self-funding, we do have the option to pay via instalments. Those are interest-free. Um, if you're looking to kind of spread out those instalments, we do recommend either um, the 20 or 40 week course as well if possible. Um, so that's our course fees and funding. I'll pass over now to Matt, who'll talk to you a little bit more about um, the considerations. Thank you, Leila. So before we do carry on, um, we scheduled 45 minutes for this um, presentation, but we have so much information, great questions coming in. So we might run slightly over, um, but hopefully you can stay with us. Um, but what we wanted to talk to you about here was what do you need to be thinking at specific times to make sure you're making the right decision for you when it comes to choosing an education provider, but also qualifying and sitting the exams and actually becoming a solicitor in England and Wales. So we believe it's factored down into four specific areas. Firstly, knowledge. Um, firstly, you need to want to have a solid and, and sound understanding of law in England and Wales. So what level is that knowledge at? Are you, are you coming from a non-law degree or non-law background? If you've been a working professional um, prior, do you need to do a GFL, a Graduate Foundation Law Program, to be able to uh, just top that knowledge up? But also, when did you last study? Um, the SQE has lots and lots and lots and lots of information that you need to be able to hold on to. Um, so if you studied quite a while ago, is it going to take you some time to get back into that? So maybe do you want to have a little bit more time over the programme 
be able to hold on to that knowledge and take that knowledge in. Secondly, finances. Um, do you need um, funding for that? Um, how do you want to pay for it? So um, Layla's just gone fantastically through our funding slide, but do you want to be able to pay in instalments? Do you need to take a loan out for the programme? Um, as whilst it is cheaper than the LPC, it is not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, if you are currently working in practice or you're in the legal industry or even in a non-legal industry, but your employer is looking to support you, will they be able to provide some sort of bursary or funding to be able to go towards the costs? Um, of either your preparation and or the exams. Time, now time is the biggest one. Time is the biggest expense we have in our lives. How much time do you have to learn to revise um, alongside your work or other commitments? So think around um, the job that you have at the moment. If you are working, um, are you able to study full-time or will you have to study part-time due to work commitments? What other commitments do you have outside of work? Um, are you a social bunny? Do you go out a lot of the time? Are you very active? Do you have lots of commitments um, each week? How much is that going to impact your time to study? Um, when are you going to be able to take time and revise over the assessment period? So once you're coming up to the assessment period of going to sit the exams, in the, in the couple of weeks prior, you're going to want to spend a lot more time being able to study. So are you going to be able to flex some of those commitments? Is work going to be flexible? Like I said, how quickly do you want to qualify? Um, if you want to qualify in as quick as time possible, you're going to be want to sit full-time courses. If you're happy to take your time and actually you don't have a time limit on there, maybe you might want to take some part-time longer-term courses like a 20-week or a 40-week. And lastly, will your employer or contracted firm support you? So um, whilst they might not be able to support you financially, but will they be able to support you with time? So is that with a study day every week, every fortnight, couple of months, um, for you to be able to sit and really focus on your studies? And lastly, QWE. Can you gain your QWE along the way? So are you going to work full time, study part time? Um, are you able to work part time and study part time um, just to give yourself a lot more opportunity to be able to do two at the same time? Um, and it's also worth thinking about, does completing SQE1 help you in securing work or qualifying work experience? We say it is a great thing um, because once you've passed SQE1, you show you know the 13 areas of law in England and Wales, you have that knowledge. So once you've got that, you become more employable to a um, prospective employer. So that's really key to think about. Next slide for us, Leila. But what we wanted to do now um, for the next kind of five, 10 minutes or so was have a little bit of a, a chat and Q&A um, with Ben. Obviously, Ben told us all about his experiences so far and what he's doing. Um, ben, welcome back in. Um, Thank you. I wanted to jump in by going right back to the start of your journey. Um, mm -hmm. And what were the key things for you when it came to one choosing the SQE itself? So obviously, mm -hmm. there's the SQE and the LPC still currently, um, and also when you started your LLM. Um, but mm -hmm. then when it came to provider, what were the key things that you were looking out for? Really good question. Um, I think the first thing was, I guess, one of the purposes of the introduction of the SQE from the SRA was to make the profession a lot more accessible. And I think particularly with the qualifying work experience um, that allows you to have a wide and varied range of experience and that to help on your um, solicitor journey. So I actually have my qualifying work experience um, from my time at, or my time now at Marks and Spencer. Um, and so it was a lot more flexible and easy for me to go down this route rather than having to try and, you know, sift out what is a very competitive process to find a training contract. Um, I also think, you know, it's with working full time, like my, my career path, I guess, I, I'm working full time. I like my job. I love m and I love the work that I do in employment law. And I don't want to have to leave m and to then go do a training contract. So doing the SQE was something that, you know, complemented my career and it fits in quite well so I've been able to do the SQE alongside my full-time role which albeit it has been very intense and tough but it, it, it's doable and you can do it and I find that you know the knowledge that I'm learning on the SQE particularly SQE1 um, has helped me with my role at m and so kind of the two gel well together um, and that's partly one of the reasons why I decided to do the SQE over the LPC. I also think as well, and this is probably just a personal thing, but the LPC is in the process of being phased out as the SQE, you know, 
you know, was becomes the only one of the only ways to become a solicitor. And I think, you know, it's exciting. And I think I want to be part of the new rather than the old. If I'm if I'm completely honest, I think it's a new it's a new um, qualification. I think it's it's a good opportunity to, you know, make the profession more accessible. And I think I want to be part of that. I think. Um, and then in terms of um, providers, so I think for me, it was support. Like that was the, the key thing I was looking at because lots of providers can provide you with the legal knowledge. Lots of providers can provide you with thousands of multiple choice questions. But I don't think all providers, from my friends that have done the SQB, from going to the assessment centres, listening to people's conversations about their provider, I think you know, support is the true difference between the providers. And I mentioned it a bit earlier, but genuinely from the get-go, my first interaction with the College of Legal Practice, it, it was so refreshing. I reached out to quite a few. The College of Legal Practice reached out to me quickly. They guided me through the SQE process, what's required for, for to qualify as a solicitor into this new system. Um, and you know any queries that I had were just answered, and I think it set a really good um, impression to me. Hence, why I decided to you know continue my journey with Culp. But then that support has continued throughout my whole journey at the College of Legal Practice. Um, for SQE one, I had a personal tutor, Catherine, who Matt you will know, and um, she honestly was fantastic from a pastoral perspective to an academic perspective it she, she was truly fantastic and I think because it is such an intense qualification you do need that quite that padded support network if I'm completely honest and the College of Legal Practice definitely provides that and similarly that support has continued on to SQB2 where I have my fantastic personal tutor Sonia who's also fantastic so um yeah so I think and I don't think other providers can offer that level of support so yeah, I would say support was one of the reasons why I chose Culp. Oh, that's amazing. And I think that kind of feeds into my next question around, you mentioned you work full time, you love your job, um, mm -hmm. and studying with us. How easy or where have the challenges lied for you being able to manage both of those? So being a full time employee, studying what is quite an intense qualification. How have you found yes, that? What yeah. have you done to keep on top of that? Yeah, so um, completely echo what you're saying. It, it is a very intense qualification. It, it's not something that you can go light in, into lightheartedly, you know, whether you are, have got, you know, if you've done the conversion course, I personally have a law degree, as I'm sure many people here will, um, you know, regardless of your background, this is intense and you should kind of expect to dedicate a, a good chunk of your time in preparing for SQE1 and SQE2 and if you do the master's options the transactional skill modules um, so it, it is tough but I think you just have to be self-disciplined and almost use the timetable and the resources that Corp give you so one of the I think the fantastic things about Corp is you have such a good structured timetable which allows you to kind of see weeks in advance what is due what you need to do and what you're attending um, so use that, use a diary, use a list, just make sure you kind of dedicate enough time. And I think as well, you, if, if you are working full time, I think I've been very fortunate in the sense that my employer has been really supportive. So, you know, if I need to, you know, want to do a one hour, two hours studying during work hours, my, my employer is more than happy to do that. But having said that, the majority of my work has been you know conducted on evenings and weekends so I have been able to structure it in a way in my life that it has been possible um but you know I think you know everyone will kind of have their their different story but um I enjoy the fact that Corp gives you the freedom to have that flexibility in doing the studying when you like but then also it does give you that structure to keep going and plow through what is a lot of content um yeah so I think it, it works you just have to be very disciplined yeah I, and I, I think that's really key um one question we did have beforehand which I think is a really fat, fun question I wanted to ask it to you somebody mm -hmm. asked do the students at the college have personal memorization tips for multiple choice questions now oh, as God. Done 
what is your your little way of being able to to memorize and i guess like i mentioned earlier as well with, with mcqs you don't know what area of law it's referring to you have to work that out how do you do it, what do you do? it it's quite interesting actually because i think you know throughout my kind of educational background you know i was so used to actually memorizing stuff and then regurgitating it in, in an exam in an essay whereas this exam is a little bit different, you know, particularly for SQE1 anyways, it's multiple choice questions. And as you've mentioned rightly, Matt, that it's best best answer multiple choice questions. So actually I would say memorizing the content actually only goes so far. I would say actually what's more important is to understand the content and then you're effectively applying that to a legal scenario in the exam. So actually I think understanding is the most important thing. There's um, the SQ1 is not very heavy on kind of case law or statute. There is a few key ones throughout the, the practice area through the um, legal areas, but there isn't that many in comparison to say doing, you know, a conversion in law or a law degree. So I would actually say I would flip it round and I would say understanding is the most important rather than memorizing you know dates key facts etc although that is still important but it's understanding it and then applying it to a particular scenario but then going back to like the actual question I would honestly say just practice 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 the more you practice those multiple choice questions the more you are going to be able to remember and memorize certain things how to answer those questions and get used to the format of the exam which is why I think COPE is so fantastic because we have I think was it over 2,000 multiple choice questions Matt so um so yeah so there is a lot of forum to practice with COPE. Amazing I think before, before I let you go um and, and I do a little bit more talking at people and um, you talk about the practice and practice 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 other than mm -hmm. so we have over 2,300 MCQs that people get access to um, but what other things do have you found that the college provide is really useful for you to be able to practice? What stuff has been out there? Um, I would say actually just the, the, the way the course is structured. So it, it's quite nice that you kind of do it in stages and each subunit in each area is exactly the same. So you don't even have to, you know, learn a new way of learning. It's very much you start with a practice video, you move on to the reading and activity and the multiple choice questions. And I think what that does is it it kind of builds your knowledge. So it starts with kind of the key facts with the video of kind of that area of law. You then move on to the reading, which adds a little bit of, you know, weight to kind of what you're learning and adds that little bit of detail while still being very laser focused on the exam. You put it into practice with the activity and then you test your knowledge with the multiple choice questions. I quite like that building block approach, if I'm completely honest, because I think there is so much to learn for this for this exam. And you do have to, you know, be super laser focused in this exam in terms of in your preparation. And I think COLP allows you to do that and it, it builds your knowledge throughout the course and for each subunit. So I would say actually the whole collection of the video, the, you know, the activities, the multiple choice questions, et cetera, they're really helpful. But then in addition as well, you know, as you know, everyone, they always have questions, reading can't cover everything. So the discussion boards that are available that have, that, you know, that go direct to the course, lead the course leader or the leader of that particular module, the expert in that practice area, you know, you can ask them and you get a really timely response with, with, a, with a precise answer to your question. So if you do kind of have those gaps still after going through all of the, the kind of the building blocks, you still have that forum to get some support. So, um, so yeah, so I would say discussion boards and actually just the course itself, the building block approach is fantastic. Amazing. Um, I hope everybody's really enjoyed us picking Ben's brain slightly. There's a <laughs> much in there. Um, ben, um, I'm going to carry on for a bit, but if you want to stay around for quite hope sure. at the end, because I'm sure there'll be some lovely more insight you'll be able to. Of course. Read. But thank you so much for that, Ben. Really appreciate no it. No worries at all. Thank you, Matt. No worries. So, Leila, if you'd like to go to the next slide. Um, Andrew, I've seen you've asked a question in the um, in the Q&A function, so I'll jump on that one now for you. Um, what is the pass uh, percentage for SQE1 and SQE2, and what are the statistical pass rates? So um, what's different with the LPC to the SQE, like I alluded to earlier, LPC, um, there were accurate pass rates as the education provider sat the exams so they could get the um, stats from their own exams. Now they are um, national exams run centrally um, by CAT plan for the SRA. 
Um, so they are self-reporting. So when it comes to education provider pass rates, they're not able to provide accurate uh, pass rates due to this. However, when it comes to um, the SRA exams, um, if you head to the SRA, uh, SRA website, and they do provide lots of in-depth detail about um, details and cohorts and demographics in relation to passing um, from a very uh, objective but anonymous point of view. So we'll pop that in the chat. Um, on average, over the November intake and the past intake, I think it was April last year, um, the average pass rate for SQE1 was around 50 to 55 percent. Now, that is that's going to change each time. Um, we're slowly, very, very, very slowly finding out at the moment that that might be slightly different for the cohort who have just got their results at the moment. Um, but there's an average that you have to pass. So the pass, there is no pass mark for SQE1 um, or SQE2. It solely comes down to the average um, of the of the cohort who sit at that point. So um, I think the average um, pass rate for November was around 54% for both ma uh, male and female uh, individuals. Um, but like I said, we'll post the link into the chat so you can go to the SRA website and have a look at the kind of the overview and summaries that they provide of each of the exams that they sit. But Andrew, I hope that answers your question to start with. Um, but if you have any more, do just um, pop us a, um, an email or a call and we can go into it a bit more. Um, but what we want to discuss quickly on this side is why should you choose us? Hopefully, if Ben hasn't sold it fantastically already, or Layla hasn't given you enough information already, hopefully the little bits of information on this side uh, hopefully show you why we think we're so good at supporting people. We believe we're SQE experts. Um, we were only set up to deliver the SQE. So all of our students um, are SQE students. We don't do LPC. Um, but we also have had now um, three, four, 500 people sitting our courses. So we're getting lots and lots of feedback. And we've had two or three iterations of students go through SQE1 and SQE2. So we really are, we believe, becoming experts in the SQE. Um, both Layla and Ben have alluded to the great levels of one-to-one -one support that we provide, um, very flexible approach where you can study in your own time, but still have uh, structured contact points throughout the week with experts in practice areas, um, regular practice assessments that closely replicate the SQE, so we get you ready, So and we build you up in the number of MCQs up to, I think, 90, um, and then you're able to sit in exam conditions and SQE exam. Very competitively priced courses, very competitively priced. Um, but also clear expectations around student engagement. The more you engage with our course, the more you get out of it, the more likely you are to pass. And that's what we find from feedback with our students. Um, our experts are there to guide you every step of the way, but also give you an SQE ready review at the end of your programme that should guide if we think you are ready to sit the exam or not. If you sit the exam um, and, you, and you don't pass, we do give you free access to all of our course content again to be able to go through that. Um, to get ready for the next time you want to sit the exam. So hopefully that gives you a nice understanding of why we think we are one of the best institutions to get you ready for the SQE. Next slide for us, Layla. So these are our upcoming courses. So we've briefly mentioned the GFL. So if somebody's coming from a non-law background, we offer a 40-week or a 20-week programme on the Graduate Foundation of Law. These start every autumn and spring. So head to our website and you can have a look where, uh, where those are. Um, on the left hand side of the screen are our SLK, which is our SQE1, and our LLM start dates. Our LLM starts in line with every SLK or SQE1 preparation course, so you don't need to worry too much about those dates. Um, we have some coming up in August, September um, that vary across part time or full time um, and standalones. So there's a real variety there. You'll notice that all of our courses finish in line with an, uh, an SQE exam date. So we don't have an an SQE course that starts and then finishes maybe a month and a half before an SQE exam. We want it to finish about a week or two weeks prior so that knowledge is fresh in your mind and you're ready to go into that exam. On the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll just see how to apply. Go straight through that QR code or the link when we send it out in an email after. Um, we look to a minimum 2 2 classification um, or equivalent degree or equivalent work experience. Um, we do consider those with a third class degree, um, but you would just need you would be required to have a meeting with one of our academics. That is not for you to sell yourself to us and explain why you think you, you, you should be able on our course. It's very much around an open discussion with one of our academic team to make sure that it's suitable for you. We don't want to put you on a course that we then think you're going to fail straight away because that's not fair. We want to make sure that you have the best chance to pass our course and the SQE. If English isn't your first language, we do require an English language exam, the IELTS being a good example. If you, um, if English isn't your first language, but you have studied an undergraduate or postgraduate programme at a UK university, that should be absolutely fine as you studied in English. But 
how you can contact us. Um, there's our email, there's our number, there's our website. Um, all of our social media handles are bottom left-hand side of the screen. Um, if you want to be able to chat to myself or Layla on a one-to-one -one basis, so either a phone call or a Zoom call like this, uh, you can book in for an appointment there. Um, we also have an SQE study group or information group. Um, so if you want to join LinkedIn um, and speak to us there, where we do lots of information sharing as well, you are welcome to join us. But that's just been nearly just over an hour. Um, so hopefully we've managed to give you lots and lots of information. We had loads of questions submitted prior. So I'm really sorry, we're not going to be able to get through everybody's questions. We'll pick out probably two or three. Um, and hopefully what we'll do after, if you want to get in contact and ask us more questions, you're more than welcome to. But I think Layla is armed with some questions to fire out. I am indeed. Where do I start? So um, thank you all so much for those who've submitted the questions. Um, we are going to, uh, as Matt said, only going to be able to touch on about uh, two or three. So um, hopefully we've covered some of what has already been answered anyway. But um, talking qualifying work experience, that's um, a big topic for those who are interested in the SQE. How do you recommend students to gain qualified work experience? Generally, but um, there was someone who was a mature student or a mature candidate who asked that question. So more broadly and, and specifically as a mature student, what you would advise? Um, I will jump in and answer some of that first, but as we have somebody who is doing QWE with us, I will also get Ben to jump in and kind of talk his experience through. Um, but QWE, um, as I explained earlier, looking at actually building competencies as opposed to working with law itself. So um, there's a real variety of different roles that you can look for. Now, what we advise from a very career perspective initially is what type of solicitor do you want to be? What type of institution do you want to work in? Is that for a firm or is that in-house with a large company, maybe like Ben is? Um, and that will start to work out where you want to work and how you want to work. Those firms or companies um, and institutions, what's their values? Do their values relate to you? That starts to open up who you might want to work for. Um, when it then comes to QWE, and trying to find a role itself, start by going through LinkedIn, at jobs on LinkedIn, start by going to indeed.com, looking at job descriptions, job titles, what jumps out at you, what do you really like the sound of? Um, once you start to work that out, you're then honing not only the industry or the institution, but the role itself. Um, and that's a really great start. Um, and one thing I used to do was actually find people with the job titles I liked on LinkedIn, and I would message them. I would then have a call with them and I would just pick their brains about their job, how they got there, what they did and what their kind of key roles are. So you hear firsthand. Um, from a general point of view, you can be going to your local high street firm. You can be contacting national firms. Um, you can be looking at vacation schemes, um, firms run throughout Easter, summer, winter, etc. So there's lots of opportunities for you to be able to gain contact with these industry um, institutions and either gain some experience, either voluntary or paid. Um, those are a great start. But Ben, jump in. How did you find your role? What did you do about getting there? How do I top that answer, Matt? That was fantastic. <laughs> um, so actually, I found my role on LinkedIn. So I think LinkedIn is a is a fantastic, fantastic tool. Um, I think so. A number of years ago, I started my kind of MS career. Um, I did an internship in the legal team when I was at university. And then when I graduated, a role became available, which I found in LinkedIn. So it kind of all, all worked very well. But um, I would say, actually, so, and I echo exactly what Matt has said. Um, that you know they are it is very skills based and those skills match the solicitor's competencies and the way I've kind of done it is um, there's a fantastic template on the SRA website which basically spells out to you in black and white what you need um, and the SRA makes it really clear that you don't need everything on that template you don't need to demonstrate every single element of the competencies you just need to demonstrate most um, and what I do is I basically speak to my manager and speak to kind of my colleagues in my team and effectively ensure that I get the tasks that can match that um, match that match those competencies so um yeah the qualifying work experience template is is really helpful and the, my biggest tip for you is kind of when you do get that role which is when you will get that role um is to ensure that you do the qualifying work experience template and work through it as you kind of from day one of your role um i think 
the worst position to be in is you do all this valuable work and then it gets to the end of your two years and you're thinking, ah, right, I need to kind of work out what I've done over the next two years when actually you've probably done loads, but to kind of recall that is quite tricky. Um, but ultimately as well, so the, as I understand it, the SRA doesn't actually specify a, you know, a kind of a stringent regime in how to demonstrate your qualifying work experience. It very much is putting the onus on you and your SRA managed supervisor so um, speak to the person that will be kind of supervising you and see how you want to do it and how you can get the most out of your experience because even though you're demonstrating you know this to become a solicitor and get your qualifying work experience into your belt I think you're also doing it for your general learning and development and you kind of want to be the best solicitor you possibly can be so um so make sure you get the most out of the process um, rather than it just feeling very tick boxy. That's kind of my attitude to it anyways. I think the only other thing to add on that is the onus is on you to make sure it is also going to be QWE. So before when you find this job and you think this job is amazing, make sure one of the first questions you ask is, will you sign this off as QWE? Because they may turn around and say no. So you don't want to sign up to a job, get six months in and then find out no. So one of the first questions, and you should be confident and comfortable in asking that because it shows that you're really, you, you want to advance yourself and develop yourself. So uh, make sure you always ask that at the start when you're looking for QWE too. Brilliant. Um, great answers both. I'm not even going to attempt to add anything because you've already covered um, all. Now I'll ask one quick one just so we can close off. Um, but um this is a really good question, actually. Um, I've lost it. Um, how do law firms view the SQE? Do they view it as comparable to the traditional LPC route, or do they have a preference for one? Okay. I'm going to let Ben start with that one first, as he's working in-house somewhere. So, um, sure. your experience, let us know. Sure. So from my personal experience, um, it's celebrated. It's seen as kind of a new, flexible way in... To, to be qualified as a solicitor um I think as well because a lot of my friends are kind of at law firms and may have done the LPC maybe doing the SQE um but I think ultimately you know it is going to get to a stage where the SQE will be the only route and the LPC will be officially phased out so I wouldn't be too worried about that that's my own personal opinion I think you know do what you want to do for your career and then find an employer that supports that and, you know, embraces that. That's my opinion. And that's what I've done. Um, and m &S has supported me along, along the way. Um, you can look online and kind of see the law firms that, you know, that are working with Colp, for example, that are supporting the SQE. And there is many. But ultimately, if I'm completely honest, in the next few years, the LPC will be gone and it will just be the SQE. So um, law firms will have to embrace it if they're not doing so already. But I do find that the more the SQE becomes known and the more months and years that it's around, it's it's becoming a lot more accepted um but if i'm honest i've never had any issues um the sqe has just kind of always been supported at my employer and, and i think to add to that there's firms are taking very many different approaches but a lot of firms are approaching it now which is fantastic as ben just said um the lpc will stop being delivered in the next few years so new courses will stop i think in 24 25 it's only a couple of years away um, and then it will totally stop being delivered by 2031. So it will then be totally out of the system. So if you're a current first year student at university, you can only choose the SQE when you are able to start taking those exams. So it's a very short time period for firms having to pick it up. Now, we work with a number of national, regional, high street firms uh, across the country, uh, which is really good for us because we start to understand a lot of different experiences and how firms are approaching it. Um, some firms we work with, like Brown Jacobson, Clark Wilmot, who are big national firms, um, they are actually taking a very different route, jumped on the SQE straight away, which we think is fantastic. But a lot of the SQE opportunities they're providing are actually in-house. Typically with the LPC, you have to get a training contract and you would get that from being external to the firm and then you go to the firm as the training contract do two years. A lot of firms now, like Clark Wilmot specifically, are actually offering the SQE and SQE opportunities to their paralegals. So people who have been doing a paralegal role and where you don't need to have, say, solicitor's qualification, and now upskilling their own internal members of staff, which is fantastic. Um, so it's not all about the SQE or an SQE training contract. So some firms are styling them as SQE training contracts. 
it's the exact same thing as GWE, but you just do two years and get your two years signed off at the end of that. So lots of firms are working in different ways. Brown Jacobson, who have been voted two years running now, I think the most inclusive institution in the UK, that's outside of law. So that's national, which is fantastic. Um, they are employing a lot of their um, SQE trainees prior to them actually even um, having sat any exam, which is, again, a real new way of doing things because a lot of firms will require you to do um, an assessment prior. So firms are really approaching it in really positive ways, but also different ways. So don't be concerned that there might only be one way of approaching an SQE and QWE through an SQE training contract. You could find a paralegal role and find yourself being upskilled, just like Ben is. So hopefully that gives you a lot of the answers you wanted today. Um, and I apologise we've not had time. We said 45 minutes and we said it might be an hour. And now we're, we're about nearly an hour and a quarter. So um, nearly all of you are still here, which is brilliant. So thank you for hanging on. Um, if you do have any more questions, um, we are going to send out the recording um, of this webinar um, in an email to everybody who's registered after. And that'll probably come early next week. Um, we will also attach the slides. We will also include in there the uh, LinkedIn group and also our course calendar if you want to have a look at when our courses are starting. But as I alluded to earlier, if you do want to chat to us, book in a calendar appointment and chat with me or Layla. There she is, highlighting it beautifully. Um, book in a one-to-one -one chat with us. And that's what we're here for. If you just want to drop us a phone line, um, you can drop us a call as well. But I hope you've all really enjoyed um, and also really enjoyed listening to the three of us chat to you. Um, but we look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you for joining. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Thank you.